I had to, I, had to, I didn't know how to tag people once I started. The screen's a lot darker than normal, so I'm having a little harder time seeing myself. But tonight's going to be a very interesting night. If you, this is a good video. It's going to be a good video. A lot of, we're going to be, we're going to be going straight to the Constitution tonight uh, and straight to some other rules uh, that people need to understand. I'm going to say this very clearly to start off. Um, we currently have an illegitimate president. Um, and I'm going to go over why. I actually, I'm going to go be so bold as to say we have a completely illegitimate. Hold on, someone's commenting on my video. Just I want to make sure I can be heard. So um, tune in, share this video. I want to make sure that I'm heard. Um, before I continue, I don't want to be rambling on a video and find out nobody can hear me. So and, uh, no, and, I can hear myself. To, so it should be good. Tag All right. I'm not seeing them. I have to look at the comments on my um, phone as we start. So guys, this is going to be a good video to share with a lot of people. A lot of people are very discouraged. They don't know what's going on. They don't have any idea. You are being lied to uh, by the media. You're going to, you're being lied to. You're, you're, um, there's a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, are taking YouTube, everyone's taking down the information. So it's getting very, very difficult to find. Um, if you do your homework, actually, all you have to do is go to the Constitution. <coughs> Man, I went down the wrong pipe. That's all we need. So we're going to be digging in that tonight. <coughs> um, sorry, folks, <laughs> right down the wrong pipe. So um, with that said, let's do a quick prayer. <laughs> because I obviously need it right now. So Jesus, we just come to you. We just ask you to be in our discussion tonight. We want to know the truth. Um, and Lord, you are the truth. <laughs> you are the way, the truth, and the life. And we're seeking truth because us Americans are in a uh, conundrum and we need to know what to do and how to respond. So I just pray that you would speak to us, that you would pour out your spirit on us. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I don't have a right to approach you based on my works, but Lord, you made me worthy on the cross. Uh, so we just ask that you would uh, guide this conversation tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Lots of good stuff tonight, guys. We are going to dig deep. We are going to dig deep. We are going to look at some serious stuff. People, if there's a video need need to share, this is it. This is going to be a video. Guys, we have to get this information out there. We have to. Okay, this is not... This is not one of those things where we can kind of, ooh, let's let's stay quiet, let's stay quiet. We can't stay quiet. Trump, when he left, some of his last presentations are that he's turning the United States back to the, to the people. And um, we have to, as a people, speak up for truth. And this is it. This is the time. We're going to be looking at some stuff tonight that we need to hear so i'm i'm uh thank you um just people join in ken robin stacy betty sarah tina rick ken uh nora um Kristen. thanks guys for joining in be in prayer as we talk about this guys I, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit because i want you to share i want to get everybody on this is this is a big video this is a lot of information uh that i'm going to give you guys today um we're going to go to the Constitution. We're going to look at what does the Constitution say about this stuff. Okay. People are freaking out. How many would agree you're freaking out right now? Everybody's like, oh my gosh. You know, and I'm hearing a lot of people say things like they're, they're bashing um, Democrats for voting for, for Biden. And the reality is, yes, people voted for Biden. But guys, it's very evident. We're not even going to spend a lot of time talking about voter fraud because everybody knows that that happened. There's 52,000 sworn affidavits that weren't heard by one uh, court, and there were 63 court hearings. Um, but we're not going to even look at that today. We're going to look at the law. What does the law say? All right, so let's dig in. Um, the other thing I hear people, actually, before we get started with that, I hear a lot of people also talking about, oh, no, oh, no, Biden signing all these executive orders. Guys, he's illegitimate. It doesn't matter if he signs an executive order right now. He's not in charge. And I will explain to you here in just a second who is in charge. And yes, everyone's fearful, but we cannot trust 
and our government or Trump or Biden or anyone right now. Our trust, we have to be surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. And I know that sounds very preachy, but let me, when you hear me out, you'll understand why. I think it's interesting that God has taken the foundation of the United States away from us right now, and we have no other foundation. And I'm going to explain this very clearly right now. So stay tuned. Um, hello, Glenda. Awesome. Thanks for joining in. All right. So we have, I'm going to say this again, a not just an, an, an illegitimate president, we have an illegitimate government. Right now, January 23rd of 2021, I'm going to be, tell you very clearly, the United States has a completely illegitimate government, and I will explain what that means. Um, or some people call it a shadow government, maybe. There's some, and you'll explain, I'll explain a little bit more of this in detail. Um, first, I want you to be, want to be very clear, Donald Trump, from the beginning of this has followed the letter of the law very, very closely. All right. Um, back in the fifties, uh, when communism was a scene, was seen as a threat, there were laws enacted consistent with our constitution that gave our, gave us protection against an illegitimate government. Okay. Right now, I'm going to be very honest with you, whether the military even totally, most of the military may not even understand this totally, but I'm telling you right now, the military, based on the U.S. Constitution, I'll explain this here in a second, is in control. They are the ones that are running the government right now, okay, based on the Constitution. Now, there's going to be all kinds of people fight against it. You're going to have, a, you'll even have attorney friends or your liberal friends or the media or whoever is going to give you all kinds of hogwash. The question is, what does the Constitution say? We're going to look at that. So let's dig in. All right. I've said that a million times. Okay. Who cares what the media says? Who cares what Simon Park says? Who cares what your neighbors say? Who cares what your attorneys say? Who cares what anybody else say? What does the Constitution say? The Constitution simply states the times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives as well as the president, shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But the Congress may at any time, by law, make or alter such regulations. This is Article 1, Section 4. Okay. Now, before I explain that, I want you to understand something. Um, when... A law is broken in regards to electing a president. Um, man, I'm kind of rambling. Let, let me explain this. How this is supposed to work, how the normal election process is supposed to work. We're all supposed to vote. I'm gonna, everybody knows this. We're all supposed to vote. Then we go in and vote. Then the states have an electoral college that chooses, uh, based on those votes, they send those votes to Mike Pence or the vice president, the vice president stands up, counts the votes, and announces the president. If someone disagrees with that in the Senate or House, they have to agree with, agree with a signed letter, uh, and they bring it up front or however they do it. And um, from that point, the Senate and House meet separately, and they debate. And they have to present evidence one way or another. Then they have to cast a vote. Um the 12th Amendment says, in this case, it's up to the House of Representatives to elect the president and the Senate to elect the vice president. In the House, each state delegation gets one vote, meaning 26 votes are needed to win. In the Senate, each senator gets a vote, meaning 51 are required to win. So most of you know this. Here is the problem. What if this is violated? What happens ultimately if there is an insurrection and both parties violate federal law? I'm going to read this, okay? If there is an insurrection in the state, the president at the request of the state's legislator, legislator or governor, if the legislator cannot be convened, may call a national guards of other states into federal service, as well as the, use the federal military to suppress the insurrection. That goes on to authorize the president to deploy military, federal, or state whenever he believes is necessary to suppress an insurrection, domestic violence, unlawful combination, or conspiracy. 
Whenever the president considers that unlawful obstructions, combinations, or assemblages or rebellion against authority of the United States makes it impractic impracticable to enforce the law of the United States in any state or territory, territory by judicial proceedings, the president may call into federal service the militia of any state and use the federal military to enforce the laws or suppress the rebellion uh, the act reads. The law also states, sorry for not looking at the screen, that the president can use the armed forces when there is an interference with federal or state law. The law may be used when an insurrection, and I'm going to read this, so hinders the execution of the law of the state of the United States and it deprives citizens of unconstitutional, unconstitutional, or of constitutional, deprives the citizens of constitutional rights, due process, or it opposes or obstructs the execution of laws or impedes the course of justice and the event of the deprivation of rights, the state is deemed to have denied its citizens equal protection of laws. Okay, let me explain this. The six states that voted that um, where there was, where the, they, each of those six states passed election laws, okay, that for COVID, basically uh, mail-in ballot laws. Those laws have to be passed, which I read earlier, by the state legislators, okay? The state legislators or the Congress has to pass those laws. That was not done. Most of those laws were passed by the governors or election officials. As a result, those states that did that violated federal law. It doesn't matter at this point, guys, foreign or domestic interference in elections, voter fraud, any of that stuff really doesn't even matter at this point. What matters, and, and, and it's interesting, I've posted on a lot of pages and people have said, prove to me that a law was violated, prove to me that a law was, or, or not a law was violated, prove to me election fraud, prove to me election fraud. Guys, there's 52,000 sworn affidavits. I don't have to prove anything to you. There's, it's obvious there was election fraud. That's not the issue. The issue was six states violated election laws. And as a result, the president has the authority to take action and use the military as a result. Okay. Let me explain this briefly again. The Insurrection Act allows the president at the request of the governor or state or state legislature uh, to federalize the state's National Guard and to use active duty military in order to suppress an insurrection against the state's government, or in this case, the entire governor, government. The act also allows a president to federalize the National Guard and send in active duty troops, even if the governor or legislator does not ask for help. Pay attention to that. Even if the states say, oh, we don't need your help, president, sorry, it doesn't matter. The president can call in, I'm charging this computer just so it doesn't die. The president can, can initiate this, okay? This act allows the president to federalize the National Guard and send him active duty troops, even if the governor or state legislator does not ask for help. If it becomes impractical to, impracticable to enforce federal laws through ordinary proceedings or if states are unable to safeguard its citizens' civil rights. We know that Trump signed the Insurrection Act and everybody was wondering why there was, now some people said there was 25,000 troops that ended up in Washington. Actually, the reports are about 60, 60 to 65,000 because there was a lot underground. There's a lot of underground tunnels and all this kind of stuff. So, um, so that's exactly what happened on January 20th and before January 20th, he sent the troops in. This is insurrection. This is this follows the letter of the law, okay? Now, you also know what happened. There was a fence put around the Capitol. It was actually more than the Capitol. It was a, it was like I'd actually did the Google uh, Earth on it. I think it was a, approximately like 3 square miles of fencing or something like that. I I, I didn't measure it exactly. Um most of you heard, and this is what everybody got excited about. Most of you have heard that the plan with that was to trap, basically, th this fence, by the way, guys, it was it, it was designed to do both, pe keep a lot people out, but also keep people in. And everybody was excited. They thought, hey, this is it. This is going to be the moment that we're all waiting for to bust all these people 
um, surround the capital, the military takes control, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that didn't happen. And it, and it doesn't, here's what I want to share with you guys and be very, and I'm, I'm, I'm being as clear as I can. It was intended to happen. It was intended to happen. That was the plan. And that was the plan from the beginning. But, and I've heard this from multiple sources, very reliable sources, that that plan was thwarted because I'm going to call this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call them white hats, the good guys, and black hats, the bad guys. What happened is obviously the black hats knew about this. So they threatened the white hats with, and I don't, I don't know if it was, it was um, some kind of um, terrorism of some sort. And I haven't heard, I'm, I'm supposed to hear that some of the sources are supposed to give the information of how that, how it was actually happened. But basically that plan was enacted. Someone from the Biden team said, okay, you pull this off. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to cause a national a, a United States, basically, um, a terrorist attack of some sort or an attack on our borders. Now we all know already that there were um, uh, many Chinese troops, 150,000 that were at our borders. Now, um, I don't know what that attack was, but basically they said, okay, you pull this stunt, many, 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 many lives are gonna be at stake. And that was the threat. Now, I don't know the details of the threat, but that was a threat. So what happened is the brakes were put on on the plan. It's, because Trump is about protecting lives. So so now Trump took all this action that I just mentioned, was prepared to do what was necessary, and then the brakes got put on because they were threatened with something very serious, okay? Um, so now the White Hats have to regroup. Now, I want to back this up with some evidence, okay? I want you guys if you get a chance to pull up videos of the inauguration, what you're going to see when you watch the inauguration, you're going to see cameras panning out to the audience. And when, and it's almost like it's playing because you, they pan into a, a person and you see them smiling and all that kind of stuff. And then they pan in another person, that person's smiling. But what's interesting is pay attention to everyone around those people that are not smiling because they, it is the, the look of terror on their face it's not a it's not a joyous event, okay? It was not a joyous event. Um, so, and we're going to discuss some other things that I that are mind boggling. Um, it's evident that there was some pre recorded um, it, back in November, and I put this in a video in November or a post that the Biden team was planning a fake inauguration. It was going to record it in a studio somewhere and was going to telecast it globally so that people from other nations would think that he was sworn in. This was planned earlier than November because I heard it was leaked from the Democratic team. If you look at videos and pictures and all that kind of stuff, you see evidence that some of the inauguration was pre-recorded. Matter of fact, I, um, I was listening to a Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward uh, if you haven't heard him, I, I encourage you to listen to some of his stuff. He uh, owned, it was in the hotel industry, got involved with some big money people and in, in, in moving, from what I understand, gold to different parts of the world, transporting gold and valuables and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then it got so big that he was transferring government money for people and got really plugged into what was happening uh, with um, Epstein stuff, some political candidates that were doing dark stuff. And he finally said, I want no part of this stuff. And he has been very vocal. Well, he actually said, and I listened to him live the other day that he, or not live, it was actually, it was recorded. Uh, it was a, a recorded interview that said he saw the inauguration. It was like seven or 10 hours before we did. So I, I trust the guy. I honestly do. I've heard enough of his stuff. I trust him. I'm not saying now I wonder how many other people did. But if you watch some of the videos, you see some really weird stuff out of place, uh, people not in the same positions in one take as they are other takes. So I don't know all the details. I think we will soon find out with a lot of footage that's going to come out, all the trickery that was used during that time. All right. Now, many of you have heard, um, okay, uh, Chris Seaton said, I heard it was a dirty bomb, small uh, suitcase nuclear bomb. No, no. Here's the deal. These guys don't care about lives. 
obviously they don't care about lives. So no telling what the threat was. So now what I want to do, a lot of you guys have heard about this idea is, is United States a corporation? Are we a, are we a republic? Are we a corporation? And I want to explain some of this from the studies that I have dug up, okay? Um, since it's called the Act of 1871, and it was established, which established the District of Columbia, we have been that we have been living under the United States Corporation, which is owned by certain international bankers and, and aristocracy of Europe and Britain, and supposedly Vatican is also involved. In 1871, the Congress changed the name of the original Constitution by changing one word, and, and that was very significant, as you will read. So people do not understand that one word or two word difference is any legal document uh, do make a critical difference. Uh, but Congress has known, um, has known and does know this. 1871, on February 21st of 1871, Congress passed an act to provide a, go provide a government for the District of Columbia, uh, as also known as the Act of 1871. With no constitutional authority to do so, Congress creates a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10-mile square parcel of land, and you can read this. It says the Act of 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapters 61 and 62. Let me read that again. So it's uh, Acts of the 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapters 61 and 62. The Act passed when the country was weakened and financially depleted in the aftermath of the Civil War. It was a strategic move by foreign interest, international bankers, who were intent upon gaining in stra a strang stranglehold on the coffers and neck of America. Here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy, guys. Basically, what happened is the United States moved because of our, we were broke after the war. We moved from a constitutional republic to a corporation owned outside of us um so here's what's interesting since then the laws in the u.s are not really laws their acts are statutes of the united states incorporated in other words they are rules and codes of a corporation like any other corporation walmart target whatever you are not bound by those rules acts and statutes of the united states unless you are a citizen which is an employee of the corporation the only laws you, the natural living, breathing person are bound to are the laws of nature. So here's the idea. And I, I didn't read this in detail, but I, someone sent this to me. The idea is when you were given a social security and all these kind of stuff, you were basically, um, I, I, should, I shouldn't even go there because I, I need to read more about how when, when as citizens, we became, become part of this corporation. Now, if you want proof of this, look at uh, subsections 15 and 15A in Title 28, U.S. Code 3002, and you should see the sentence, United States means a federal corporation. Let me say that again. Uh, look at subsection 15 and 15A in Title 28, U.S. Code 3002, and you should see the sentence, United States means a federal corporation, okay? What most people do not understand is that we, that, that the United States is that it's a foreign corporation. Now, here's what's interesting. Anyone who works for this corporation is a foreign agent and is unknowingly or knowingly, one way or the other, committing fraud against the American people. It's no different than, when, uh, than what the agents of the British Empire did to the American people back in the 1700s. To be more specific, the politicians working in Washington, D.C., and nearly every po uh, politician, judge, attorney, police officer, and government agent working throughout the U.S. are foreign agents. Based on the fact that D.C. is a corporation not owned by the people anymore. Okay? Now, stick with me. Stick with me. Here's the scary part. Because the, these government employees... Now, I, here's the deal. I don't believe most of our congressmen, senators, judges, all this kind of stuff, understand the magnitude of this. I, I don't believe they understand the magnitude of this, or they understand this at all for that matter. Because these government employees are foreign agents, here's what's interesting. We should never vote for them. This is what's crazy. When I read this, I read this in the laws. 
if we vote for them, we are also guilty of treason, okay? Against the Republic of the United States and the 50 union states, okay? Here's the deal. Again, I bet 95% of people have no idea this is happening. Uh, we've been living under this umbrella for 150 years and you can see why people, nobody knows about it, okay? I didn't know about it and I looked it up and it's in there under this these codes that I gave you. As Americans, here's what's interesting. We've lost control of our government over a century ago. And that's what happens to a nation when its people become ignorant, take freedom for granted, ignore the actions of politicians and do not study their history, which I did not. Now, I want you to stop and think through this. Now, how can you know, how can you like, okay, how can you determine if this is actually what's happening, okay? Just just stick with me here for a second. How do you, how do you make sense of something? I mean, is there evidence of this? Are the actions of Donald Trump, I'm just going to blow my screen up. I can't see, but um, are the actions of Donald Trump in line with the rumor that he's removing us from this corporation? I, I want you to think, I want you to think deeper here, guys. Are the actions of Donald Trump, if this is true, then what has Trump done to prove this is true and to prove that he's removing us from that corporation? Okay. Um, and I'm going to make a point here that I hope hope makes sense. When, when voter fraud happened, 52,000 people agreed to swear an affidavit under penalty of law that, that were witnesses of some form of irregularity, fraud, etc. However, this is what's crazy. There were 63 court cases and not one judge wanted to hear it. It makes me wonder how many judges know this and are afraid to expose it. Because think about it. I mean, think about all the attorneys, all the judges. They built their entire career under this umbrella. And it's likely that if this stuff was being exposed by Q and other organizations, that they're protecting themselves. And this is just me throwing some conspiracy theories out there. You can call it what you want. I don't really care. So... We're going to look at we're going to look at some other things to determine if this happened and if Trump is really taking action to clean it up. OK, so. Um, I read this, I'm going to read what I, I read just before I this is another uh, 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 website that I read this on Donald Trump and others signed a new American Declaration of Independence on July 4th of 2020. It was really interesting. Melania Trump made reference to it in a tweet that says we're celebrating Trump's signing of the Declaration of Independence today. Why would you say the signing of the Declaration of Independence? Really weird. Anyway, just it was a tweet and maybe she mistweeted something, but but I'm going to read this. Donald Trump and others signed a new America, American Declaration of Independence on July 4, 2020. U.S. military knows the true 2020 election results of an illegitimate votes cast before foreign interference uh, altered the results. They knew. Here's the deal. Trump and his top military advisors, pay attention to this. There was a video, I think it was about a year ago, and it's Trump standing. I don't know if he was in the White House. I don't know where he was. And it's all these key people in the military, and it's him and Melania in the front. And he says something like, pay attention to these people. And they said, well, what, what do you mean? He goes, you'll know soon. And, and um, so these people were made aware of the whole foreign interference and election stuff a year or two ago. Okay. Remember Trump signed um, uh, in 2018, an executive order about foreign interference and election. Then, then um, he established CISA, which is a cyberspace infrastructure security agency to be able to, to be able to capture this data. Then uh, he established Space Force, which, long story, but it was already established under a different name, but he took over that. Um, all of it in preparation for this. So everybody knew about foreign interference before it was happening. Now, keep this in mind. How do we know this? How do we know? Do you remember in, it was as early as July, where they were talking about these new election rules that were being passed in the House and the Senate was going nuts and they were like, oh, no, oh, no, you can, you know, the, the, the Republicans or the, not the rhino Republican, not those guys, but the actual Republicans were like, 
you can't pass these laws. You can't pass these laws. And the Democrats were going nuts. They were like, we have to pass them. We have to pass them. We have to make this happen. We have to make this happen. Why? Why, 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 why? Why did they want to impeach Trump for Russian collusion, which they found no evidence? Guys, they knew all this time. That's why they spent three and a half years trying to impeach Trump because they knew he made multiple comments that he was taking the deep state down. They had to get rid of him. They had to because they were going to be exposed. And when that didn't work, when they saw that didn't work, guess what happened? COVID-19. And the Lord spoke to me that clearly in February before anyone knew a China virus was a China virus. When I heard about a virus, I prayed and God said it was, it was a manufactured virus for political purposes and China was involved, and, and man, has that played out. And I'm going to talk to you guys here in a second about, notice how all these states or all these cities are saying, oh, I think we're going to open the economy back up again. Ooh, how convenient is that? Why? Because elections were over. Why did uh, the vaccine come out four days after the election? Not four days before, four days after the election. Guys, pharma's behind it too. There, there are, there's so much information in pharma in particular Guys, that we have cures that they're hiding from us. Matter of fact, I believe they're creating a lot of the viruses so that they can give us, and that you can conspiracy theory that all you want, but let, let's keep going. Okay, so the U.S. military knew about this. They knew. So Donald Trump, I'm sorry I'm not paying attention to anybody that's joined in here. Donald Trump is, now this person says, is the first president of the United States of a new nation as declared in January 4th of 2020, which I believe it what. His, he's actually going to be, he's going to move from the 45th president to the 19th president. It's because there was 18 before him up to the 1871 thing. Because of this, let me say this, I'm going to make it clear. Joe Biden's inauguration is irrelevant since the office he assumed to take on January 20th no longer exists. Um, when, when Trump stepped away, he... Um, some say he conceded his presidency to a defiant private corporation. I don't think he ever conceded, to be honest. That was the plan. So President Trump told us already on January 1st of 2021 that papers that were signed that went, um, let me say that again. President Trump told us already that on January 1st, 2021, that papers were signed that went into effect to make this happen. This was done... Um, so all this was done. So he, he announces this on supposedly uh, uh, the new year. Um, so, um, so right now, the United States States Inc. is dead in the water. It's dead. The United States Inc. is dead. So the entire, and, and it's interesting, I'm going to say something here in a second. It doesn't even matter if this is not even true, and I'll explain this in a second, the fact that, let me just explain it now. Okay, so if you don't believe in this 1871 thing, that doesn't matter anyway. You don't have to believe that. Let me explain. Because of the six states violated federal laws, when the Senate and House voted, didn't care, knowing, knowing that these states violated these federal laws, when they certified that election, all of them are guilty of treason. Matter of fact, anytime a nation is, or anytime our nation is in a state of or a, a, a state of what do they call it, state of emergency, it's not only treason, it's high treason. That's guys, again, this is why the, the Democrats and rhinos are still trying to get Trump out. They're they're still trying to impeach him. They're doing every he's gone. Why do they want to impeach him? Because they know what this means to their careers. They know what this means to being exposed. They know what this means to I mean, guys, high treason, this is death for most of these people. They want him, they 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 want to wipe him out, okay? That's why they don't have a problem killing everybody in the nation because they're going to go down with it, okay? It's dead in the water. It was necessary, here's what's interesting, it was necessary to have the Democrats elect themselves to office uh, of the U.S. Um, that They needed to, um, to elect themselves in a defunct corporation, okay? Um, and President Trump has divested himself, okay? So USA right now, guys, this we're living in this right now. And here, again, if you don't believe in the 1871 thing, you it, it doesn't matter because you still have an issue with the fact that we, we certified a president under fraudulent electors or, or because of these states violated these rules. So ultimately, 
what's happening now in either scenario, it doesn't matter what scenario you believe, what happens in both scenarios is the United States military is now on the throne. Whether in, in Linwood, I heard Linwood do a, a video yesterday, United States military is running our country despite what anyone believes, okay? I'm telling you, it's a constitutional thing. It doesn't mean it matter whether you believe in the 1871 thing or not, because the senators and congressmen passed the laws. It's a defunct election. It did it. It is, and it throws everybody that participated into treason and then high treason because it's a state of emergency. Okay. Um, no more power in the USA now. Some good news about some of this. Um. The plan, and I've heard this from multiple sources, is to bankrupt the United States. Remember Trump, one of the things he said, and I love this during the debate when he first ran for office, someone asked him, you filed bankruptcy like twice or three times or whatever times. And he goes, right, I have. I, I let the rules of the game, the, the rules that the United States established, and I took advantage of those. And I don't know if he funneled money into one organization, some debt into one organization, how he did, but it obviously put him him on top. Here's what happens. If we bankrupt the corporation, who are we bankrupting the corporation to? Ultimately, we're bankrupting it to China. China holds most of our debt. That puts China in a really, really, really bad situation. That's why China has been heavily involved this whole time, guys. That's why China is in the Democrats' back pocket. They can't afford for Trump to file bankruptcy because then their government shuts down and their government gets put back into the hands of the people just the same as it does ours. This is massive, guys, massive. Part of what is going to happen in this process is we're going to move over to the, the Gisera, um, uh, uh bank. Basically, right now, our money, um, when we went in, in financial um, we had financial troubles in the, in the early, well, late 1800s, early 1900s, whatever it was, we, um, basically, um, turned over our finances to two families. And those two families have owned us. The central banking system is not owned by the federal reserve is not owned by us. It's, it's two families and you guys know who those families are. And I don't want to say too much because I will get um, deleted on, on uh, Facebook and I'm surprised I'm even live at this point. The idea is, is he's moving us away from that banking system, the federal banking system that's going to go bankrupt to this Gisera, Gisera thing, okay? And it's going to be backed by gold. Now, I've got some really good news on that here in a second. So, um, um, so on January 20th, it doesn't matter anymore. The entire USA Inc. and those elected to USA Inc. are merely paper tigers not worthy. The paper they're written on. So basically everything that Biden is doing right now is worthless. He can publicize it. He can push it. He can do whatever, but guys, he has no authority. He is not the, 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 the duly, he's an illegitimate president of the United States. And so are all the senators and congressmen right now. This is crazy. We're literally in a place of total chaos. And I don't mean to scare you because, and I'm going to share some good news and our, what we do in this process after. So stick with me. All right. Um, all right. What will happen is when we move over to this system, we're going we're gonna to be debt-free as a country. That, that ended, um, um, what just blows me away that all this national debt that we've occurred will go away. Now, um, now it appear again, it appears that he dissolved this corporation on July 4th and it appears that he made himself the 19th president. Um, now here's what he has to do. He has to remove himself as the 45th president of the United States or 46th president of the United States so that he won't be part of this legal institution. All right. He had pay attention to this Trump did not want to be elected as the 46th president of the United States. He did not want that title. Why did he not want that title? He knew the election was going to happen. And guys, he let it happen. He could have, he could have stopped the foreign interference. He let it happen. He does not, did not want to be elected the 46th president of the United States under 
the 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 old constitution, the corporation constitution, because of what he's doing. So he had to let Biden swear in so that he is no longer part of that defunct corporation. Okay. Now he's away. Now he's just a citizen at this point. He's either a citizen or the 19th president of the United States. Okay. Um, because the 12th hour passed and Trump was not in, he's innocent. He has no authority. And, and this is all ties in, by the way, let me say this. In 2018, he signed an executive order on foreign interference in election because DC is now a foreign entity. Everyone that was involved in the inauguration participated in foreign interference in the election and they're also guilty. Isn't that cool? So um, why? Goes back to, it doesn't matter, six states violated the laws. So I could go on forever on that. Um, so in this case, okay, in all this case, um, uh, this basically falls back on the military, okay? Now, either way, whether you believe, again, believe in the 1871 thing where Trump, where we moved to a corporation and Trump moved us back out of it, and and put the the Washington as a foreign entity. You can believe that or not. I don't really care. The other one is it doesn't it doesn't matter because either way, um, all the senators and congressmen, along with the president, um, swore him in under fraudulent electors because the states violated law. So in both situations, Biden and our leadership is null and void, and the military has to step in. Okay, both situations doesn't matter which one you believe in. If you just believe in the Constitution and you don't believe in the 1871 thing, right now, everyone that swore in that participated in the inauguration is uh, is guilty of treason, and it's a null and void election, and we do not have a president of the United States of America. Let me just be very clear, guys. It's in the Constitution, okay? Um, uh, let me look. There's some other bullet points I wanted to... Um, so again, executive orders, he can sign all executive orders he wants. Now he can push them through because the media and other people are pushing it. Um, um, okay, I'm, here's what's really cool. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through some of these executive orders and show you how beautifully these play out, okay? And you can find them online. Um, let me show you, I can connect, uh, send you the link, but it is, uh, I don't have it up anymore, sorry. So let me go back. Okay, let me look at it. Let's look at these executive orders. Okay, number one, foreign interference in elections. Executive Order One Three Eight Four Eight. So thirteen thousand eight forty eight, imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in a United States election. Why would you do that if either eighteen seventy one wasn't accurate, or you knew it. it's either way, guys, either way you look at it, either the 1871 put DC as a foreign entity. So we signed 18, signed this executive order saying anyone that participates in a foreign interference in election. So anyone that was involved in the election is now guilty of treason. Okay. If 1871 is correct, if not, it still doesn't matter because if anyone participated in any shape or form in foreign interference in election, then they also are guilty. Okay. The second thing he did, and this was really cool. I love this. On January 5th, right before all this crazy stuff happened on the 6th, he called Antifa a terrorist organization. Okay, he signed that into, into act, um, which allowed him, when Antifa stormed the Capitol, allowed him to determine that Antifa was a terrorist organization, which allowed him to sign, again, another backup plan that in, they insurrected the Capitol. So he signed the Insurrection Act, okay? Um, on January 19th, now, and I, I can't remember this executive order, and I didn't have time to pull it up, but sign another executive order putting the hands of the government back into the people. Do you remember when he left office? What did he say? He said something like, um, now is a new era or something, and I'm putting the hands back into the people. I can't remember. Put the quote up. Someone put the quote up. But it was something to the effect when he left, he said he was going to put the, the hands of the government back into the hands of the people, okay, uh, which is exactly what this 1871 thing is. Um all right, let's look at some other executive orders. Executive Order 13981, protecting the United States from certain un, 
manned aircraft systems. Okay, let's read another. Executive Order 13980 uh, as of January 18th of 2021. Why is he signing all these things right at the end? This one is protecting Americans from overcriminalization through regulatory reform. Let me read some of this. By the authority vested in President, by the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, and to improve transparency with respect to the consequences of violating certain regulations and to protect Americans from facing unwarranted criminal punishment for unintentional violations of regulations. Uh, it is hereby ordered as follows. Purpose. In the interest of fairness, federal criminal law should be clearly written so that all Americans understand what is prohibited and act accordingly. C. Criminal prosecutions based on regulatory offenses is most appropriate for those persons who know what is prohibited or required by the regulation and, and choose not to comply, thereby causing or risking substantial public harm. Criminal prosecutions based on regulatory offenses should focus on matters where putative defendant had actual or constructive knowledge that conduct was prohibited. Ha! Listen to these, listen to this executive order. What this is saying is you and I guys would have been guilty of treason based on this 1871 act because we we voted people in that are a foreign entity. What this does is, is some of this says that we are, we are, if we didn't know about this, then we're protected. But those who knew about it are not protected. Ah, woo! And, and take this how you want. This is how I'm reading some of this. Here's another executive order uh, signed in January 18th, 13977. Protecting law enforcement officers, judges, prosecutors, and their families. Um, go look at that. It's uh, Executive Order 13977, okay? Another one. Here's an amendment executive order, amending executive order 13959, addressing the threat from securities investments that finance communist Chinese military companies. So anyone that that is involved in the China, anyone that financed Chinese military, which is the CPP basically, that they um, there's a punishment uh, or some type of disciplinary action. I haven't read the whole thing totally. Here's another one. Executive Order 13971, addressing the threat posed by applications and software developed or controlled by Chinese companies. Right now, China is listening to everything we say, guys. Uh, another executive order, 13984. And these are all um, signed in the last couple weeks or since January 1st. Taking additional steps to address the national emergency with respect to significant malicious cyber uh, activity, enabled activities, uh, cyber enabled activities. That was on the 19th. Here's the idea, guys. Look at how strategic he was when he left. All the, all these executive orders confirm everything that that we've been dis, that I've been discussing that I've been pointing out to people from the beginning. Everybody's like, Michael, you need to just give it up, man. Biden's won. I'm sorry, Biden's not a president. He's not. He can please someone type amen. I need an amen, I, even though I'm not that kind of pastor kind of guy. But I need an amen right now because that is so good. All right, now, um, uh. Here's the other thing. These, these executive orders protect the United States from foreign invaders. Love it. They also protect us via, uh, us from uh, violators of the United States Constitution. All right. Now, let's get into some other stuff. I want a couple other things I want you to consider. Why then? If none of this is true, none of this is true, why are all these people still angry at Trump? He's out of office. Well, why do they? I mean, some people say, well, they don't want him to run again in 2024. Let me tell you something, folks. Let me be very clear. If action isn't taken right now, there will not be another 2024 election. It ain't happening. I know people are like, well, we'll get them next time. Let me look close. It ain't going to be next time, folks. If we don't stop what's happening now, there will not be a 2024 election. They rigged this one. When, when we had some control in the Senate and the House, they rigged it. Guys, you think 2024 is going to be any different? Are you kidding me? They, look at Georgia. They used Dominion Systems after proving Dominion Systems had interference and actually violated the law because you're not supposed to connect to the internet. But they used it for a second election after it's proven to be true. You think they care about us and the votes of the people? Hell no. All right. So why are they want to impeach him? They spent three and a half years. That didn't work. They tried COVID. 
That obviously worked because people bought it hook, line, and sinker, even though he still didn't get didn't win based on votes. They will do anything because they're getting exposed. Guys, it's it, it, it's 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 one it's one thing of everything I've told you, but it's another thing that how much corruption is involved. They know they're going down, guys. They're afraid of him. Um, if they can rig an election with the Senate, House, and the presidency, we know they're going to cheat again. All right, here's the deal, guys. They can't get him. <laughs> this is so funny. They, oh, I did get some amens. Oh, yeah, look at that, a bunch of them. Nice, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, here's what's crazy. CNN today, CNN said that that Antifa, they admitted Antifa was guilty of the insurrection, that, that Antifa is now, that is now CNN. CNN's admitting it. I'm wondering if they're starting to sweat. <laughs> I love this. Woo! Okay, there, here's an interesting. They can't do anything. They can't. I don't know. They can't, they can't be guilty and they can't impeach him officially. Again, let me explain impeachment and impeachment works like this. When you're arrested, you're indicted. Okay. And what an indictment is, it says that you're guilty of something or I know it said, it says you're charged with a crime. Okay. Then you have to go through a court. And then if they determine you're guilty, then obviously you're punished. But if they determine you're innocent, then the indictment goes away and you're innocent. Okay. And impeachment's the same thing. That's why he wasn't removed when he was impeached last time. An impeachment says this person may or may not have committed this crime, so they have to go through a trial. And if they go through the trial and they're found guilty, then they're actually impeached or removed. Guys, they can, they can try to impeach him, but he's done nothing. If you notice how many times before and after the election, he kept saying, peace, 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 be peaceful. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this. He was over and over and over and over again. Okay. There, here's what's interesting, guys. Not, <laughs> not only this, I just heard this video for the first time today. There's videos of people, of patriots outside Washington yelling at the, the Washington police officers saying, you need to call in more troops. You need to call in more troops. You need to stop this. They're telling them, what do we got to do to help? I mean, they were participating in helping with the insurrection. I mean, there's videos out there of patriots going, police officers, you need to stop this. And what's crazy is we also have videos of police officers opening the gates and escorting these people up the stairs. It's insane, guys. That's why all these laptops that were seized, and that's a whole nother, if you haven't watched, guys, that, that Trump actually had uh, members of the special forces or military at some level inside the Antifa when they went into um, the Capitol and seized the laptops and all that kind of stuff and captured tons and tons and tons of data. That's why Nancy Pelosi has been freaking out from the beginning. All right, let's go on. Um, now, Here's what's going down now. Trump needs to let some stuff. Okay. The plan was to capture everybody in Washington. And like, like I said earlier, there is, um, there was obviously some attempt uh, that they basically told the Trump team, listen, if you pull this off and you capture us, we are going to, I don't know, nuclear bombs or I don't know what it was that they were going to set off. So they, they kind of caught him where he had to kind of step back and, and um, take a second look at this, but here's what needs to happen right now. It's probably a good thing because I don't want to say it's a good thing. It's, it, it's a bad thing that could turn into a good thing. Right now, people, Biden needs to be exposed. It, it, people need to see, obviously, the Keystone Pipeline. Um, guys, that was 23,000 employees or 26,000 employees or something that went down because of that. Here's what's crazy, guys. That was a Stupid mistake for him because now Canada, who may have been on his side before, is ticked off. They got money involved in this, billions involved in this. They just, Biden just royally pissed off Canada and, and 26,000 union workers, I'm assuming it was union work. Man, um, um, I, and I'm not so sure that other countries don't have money in this Keystone Pipeline too, um, but they're, they're ticked. They're ticked. Bad move, Biden. Um, WikiLeaks. Um, there's tons right now, and this is why they're nervous too. There's tons of WikiLeaks out. Um, notice Mitch McChina, someone calls him, Mitch McDonald, um, begged Trump, threatened Trump, didn't beg him, threatened Trump and said if um, he pardons Julian Assange, 
that they are going to 100% convict him of guilty uh, in the impeachment hearing. So he threatened him. Why? Because Julian Assange knows the dirt. Um, also pay attention to the fact that it that uh, the D-class went out. Now, I was watching the D-class, and the D-class was kind of boring to watch. It was the day before the election. And what it was was all these numbers of declassification stuff, and then all of a sudden you didn't hear about it anymore. And it's because the media is doing everything they can to censor that information so that you and I don't know the details of what all these... I mean, I'm talking Russian scandal. I'm talking Obamagate. I'm talking all of it. All of it's out there now. Just got to dig, and I haven't dug enough. Okay. Oh, here's something I'm going to tell you. Do not, 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 do not go to use Google as a source for your information. All right. I've said this before. Google has a platform. It's called Simming, Search Engine Manipulation Effect. And let me explain this. I am a marketing guy and I've been marketing for 20 years and I know how to market. And one of the things to get in the top 10 positions in Google, it's very expensive to do that, to get those top positions. For, for a political candidate to get their information in those top, uh, top spots nationwide, I'm talking millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to get that position. Well, Google has a platform called Simi, it's Search Engine Manipulation Effect. And the, it's so powerful. There was a guy by the name of Dr. Robert Epstein, Google him. Dr. Robert Epstein, not, I don't think he's in relation to Jeffrey Epstein, but he was midline to liberal, okay? He had been studying Google's effect on the minds of people for about 20 years and realized how dangerous it was. He found that Google has the, the ability to impact the moral fabric of society. Basically, let's say you don't believe in transgenderism within five or 10 years, they can change millions of people's attitudes about transgenderism, gay marriage, um, a political candidate, um, whatever. Whatever they choose to deem appropriate, Google choose to deem appropriate, that's the information that you're gonna get. Now pay attention to this. In Matthew chapter 24, that Bible talks about an end times deception. Now, whether this is part of it, I don't know, but one of the things I've found is that it's getting progressively harder to find information and I never I never find information on Google anymore that is that is that that is conservative ever I don't find it I don't I have to go to um duck duck does okay but the other one is uh it's called oh what's it called um help me someone there's another y yippy.com is that right yippy hold on yeah, yippee.com, yippee.com. It's it's the better one that I've found so far that I, actually I can find information on a lot of this stuff. I'm telling you, you guys aren't gonna find stuff on Google. You're not gonna find it on YouTube anymore. YouTube's deleting like crazy. Instagram, deleting, Facebook. One of the guys I followed for a long time, I mean, he had like 100 and something or 100,000 followers or whatever. As he was speaking, they deleted his page. Boom, took it off. Crazy, crazy stuff, guys. I'm telling you, we are being, um, it's communism, folks. It's communism. So let's keep going. Um, now, here's what's really interesting that I find interesting is that after January 6th, um, Antifa was still busting windows and stuff and still tearing up Washington. And I, I'm... Here's what I'm wondering about Antifa. I, I don't doubt that Antifa may, they're paid by George Soros and all, but they're also getting, a lot of the politicians are behind it. So I'm kind of wondering what's going on with that. Um, if anybody has any more information on Antifa. But here's, pay attention to some stuff right now. I'm going to change some subject a little bit, but pay attention to what's happening. Now that Biden's in office, Andrew Cuomo's talking about opening up New York. Lightfoot's talking about opening up Chicago. Whitmer's talking about opening up Michigan. Uh, whoever the, the, uh, Washington mayor, Washington is now opening up as of um, Whitmer saying February 1st. Um, and here's the deal. If Trump was still in office, there'd still be a, a, a horrible pandemic. But be, because he's coming out, now all of a sudden it's, the economy is going to open up and all this other kind of stuff. A um, few other things. Let's just, um, I'm just going to read just some bullet points and some other stuff and it may get confusing. I'm just going to do some bullet points. So, by the way, uh, the candidate is the, 
President of the United States finishes his office at 12 o'clock on uh, Inauguration Day. The, 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 the existing president at the time finishes duties at 12, and at 12.01, um, the other president is supposed to be sworn in. Uh, Biden was not sworn in. He was sworn in, I want to say 11 minutes or eight minutes or something before that time. Um, here's what's interesting. During the inauguration, some news channels live, live, had Lady Gaga being announced in other channels, she was already in the middle of her set. Hmm. So was it live? How much of it was pre-recorded? So they're saying one chance, they're both saying that she's live, but one, she's announcing that she's coming on and another, she's already into the act. And it's quite a bit of difference in time. Again, Charlie Ward, uh, who I explained earlier, he said, I think he was in Spain or something and watched the inauguration 10 hours before it happened. You know, trust me, I, I heard him say it, I, whether, um, and again, I've said this earlier, in November, it was, it was leaked from the Democratic Party that they were planning on doing a fake inauguration anyway. So other countries thought um, that um, uh, the Biden was elected no matter what. Um, guys, we are entering right now um, into if those elected officials are illegitimately elected officials, we're entering into if they if 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 something doesn't happen and the military steps in, we're entering communism. Sorry. All right. So let me let me talk about this again. Again, Rothschilds. Um, I wasn't going to say that, but Rothschilds own um, the Federal Reserve, basically. Uh, how this works is you have the central banking. So anytime you take out a loan, a student loan, a house loan, a car loan, business loan, all of that money comes from central banks. Central banks are owned by the Rothschilds, okay? Um, so when Trump moves to the Nassara Jassara financial sy system, he takes the money away from the Rothschilds and um, basically bankrupts the United States corporation. We're free of debt and then we start over again. Now, I've heard this from at least four reliable sources. Uh, one being Charlie Ward, another being, I want to say Lynn Wood said this. I, and, and don't and I don't either way I can't remember who all said this um, that there were Vatican arrest officials arrested many of them when that happened um, there was um, uh, thirty four this is crazy and I can I, I don't even believe this because it's so crazy but I knew the Vatican had a lot of money for a long time. Thirty-four quadrillion dollars worth of everything from gold, cash, artifacts, etc., removed, and it was removed uh, and put in uh, what's called dumbs. Um, dumbs are deep underground military bases. Dump, deep underground military bases. Some of them are hundreds of years old. Some of them there are new. Some of them are. All over. So what happened is they seized this money from the Vatican and they put this money and these assets, gold, artifacts, etc., into these underground dumps. And in addition to that, well, in, in, in other places, but in addition to that, a lot of these underground dumps were actually um, that, that um, where uh, child trafficking and the sex trade stuff were actually destroyed. Now, let me talk about that for a second, too. Um, there's a lot, a lot of earthquakes happening all over the world right now, a lot in the U.S., other countries, and they're not in areas where these people naturally have earthquakes. And what's happening is these dumbs are being destroyed. Um, and, and basically they're underground tunnels that are being destroyed so that um, uh, they stop this child tra trafficking stuff. Um uh, let's see here. Uh, what else? Oh, again, Trump would be the 19th president of the Republic. Um, also, the, one of the executive orders, any American companies that interfered 
And this is so cool, guys. This is so crazy cool. That any, and this is why they seize money from the Vatican. Any country that or any institution that's proved to participate in our election, they can seize the assets from that organization. So, for example, right now, actually, one of the reasons they took money from Vatican II, by the way, Obama's, Clinton's, uh, Bush's had billions in the Vatican Bank. But what's interesting is China... Uh, and this is, this is, this is what kind of blows my mind a little bit. It's one of the reasons why this, do you remember when, when they found out the Vatican was involved through the Leonardo satellite system that was interfering, basically they had a Leonardo satellite system that was connecting to the Frankfurt Germany system and altering the votes. When that was proved by DNI Ratcliffe, John Ratcliffe's report, that's when they went to Vatican. That's when all these people got arrested. That's when the money was seized. Now here's what's interesting if that that's why they can take the money it's their money they, they said anyone that participates we get we get your assets now here's what's crazy i don't know you know the vatican owns a lot of stuff the vatican owns um like daughters of charity and, and all these institutions where and i don't know how they're owned someone can explain that to me and they may be each an individual different entity but if it's tied to the vatican i'm talking hospitals i'm talking not tons of not-for-profit organizations Based on the executive order in 2018, if it's proven, which they, they've already done that, they can seize those assets and they become property of the U.S. So here's what's crazy, crazy, and I've heard this from multiple sources, this dollar amount, $34 trillion, if that's the case, not only do we file bankruptcy with China and we're free and clear, we have $34 quadrillion as, as, or more, or, or, or assets. It's crazy, guys. Um. All right. Now I heard, I did hear this about George Soros. He has Antifa, BLM and others ready that if, that the, if the, the military tries to take back over, they're going to cause riots and all that kind of stuff. But here's what's interesting. During all this time, not only is this happening in the U.S., but Estonia, Kuwait, Russia, Italian government's collapsing, Angela Merkel uh, stepping down. All these governments are just falling apart all over the world. Um, so um, now let's talk about Let's talk about what our role is in this and let's talk about um we have a responsibility to i've actually been going on i've been blocked by a handful or been facebook only lets me do so many and then i they say okay you can't post anymore i've been going on to facebook pages of the, uh, the navy uh, army navy air force marines um and I've been posting information about this, that Biden is an illegitimate president and the, and the U.S. military has to step in because I don't believe a lot of them even know yet. We need to make people aware of this, guys. I'm telling you, whether you believe in the 1871 thing or you believe it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's no matter what, we do not. Our, our current United States leadership is fraudulent. It is Ill illegitimate. It, it doesn't. And if you haven't tuned in, go back to the beginning. In either scenario, it's illegitimate and the military is in control. Lynn Wood, who I trust, said the same thing yesterday in an interview. Right now, what who needs to be in control, who, who should be in control, and who is in control is the military. Now, whether the, the um, now I heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, I've been digging in that the Pentagon didn't allow Biden in um, uh, and is not allowing him information. Um, but let's let's talk about what our role is this um uh i also heard that someone just posted here harris was sworn in before biden which is also illegal by the way it, it violates the constitution um all right when i was thinking about this and praying about this i i, I couldn't help but to think of when moses broke away from the uh, egyptians and stick with me, folks, this is important. When he broke away from the, he went up to the Egyptians and he said, dudes, we want to be free. And they said, you know, and they went through this plagues and all this kind of stuff. Well, here's what's interesting. If you don't believe in the Red Sea stuff, you can actually Google it. You can see chariots, wheels, and all that kind of stuff in the bottom of the Red Sea. So Google that information. Here's where I believe we are. I believe that we stepped at the edge of the Red Sea on, on a, a January um, 20th. And um, the seas parted, and we're in it, and we've got the we got we got the enemies behind us, and we're in the we have 
however many feet of water on either side of us, and we're walking through some very, 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 very dangerous territory. And the military, the military is behind us, the water's up, and we don't, it's chaos, okay? It's chaos. These guys didn't trust in the water. They didn't trust in the military. They didn't trust in their legs. Guys, that was a hundred, some people say it was 190 miles from one side to the other. I don't know. I kind of tried to look it up. Can't remember. But the idea is they had to march through a really difficult time. This wasn't something like, woo, woo. They were running, guys. They, the military was on their, on their tail. The, and and uh, the Egyptians were on their tail and they're running for their lives. And I believe we're there. We're in the place where we have to rely on God. I think it's interesting. It's almost like God said, okay, I'm going to remove your military. I'm going to remove everything you believe in. I'm going to remove Trump. I want to, I'm going to, I, right now, you got one place to trust. You got one. You got, you got, guys, we have one thing to trust in right now. Right now, we don't have a United States government. We don't. We don't. I don't care if Biden thinks he has it. I don't care what your local friend says. I don't care what your liberal friend says or your conservative says. And I don't care your friends that are going, guys, we just need to surrender. No. It, 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 right now, if this is illegitimate, how much else are they going to pull on us that's also illegitimate? They don't care. The, the Constitution, guys, was ripped in half. The Constitution was destroyed November 4th, uh, December 14th, January 6th. And January 20th was ripped in shreds. Actually, before that, when they passed election laws that were not appropriate. They've been ripping the Constitution up from the beginning. Guys, we, we at this point, don't even have a Constitution. If all these times these laws can be violated, then we don't even have anything. What, what do we stand on? The judges aren't going to do anything about it. Why? Because they know the deep state. They know, the, the, they know China. They know that... I mean, it's crazy what's going on right now. Um... There's some good news. There's some good news happening. I heard from good sources that Pentagon is adding, that not only are they keeping 7,000 troops, but they're adding uh, 12,000 more troops are coming in. I don't, I, I need to verify that. Um, we also, uh, a couple other good things that encourage me that we know that to prove this stuff is we know that Biden didn't take a government plane, an aircraft into the White House. Um, he was not given that authority. Um, there's a couple other things that I, I think just for fun, if you guys want to do this, I'm going to get back to this biblical stuff here in a second. Go look at pictures. There's a website I probably ought to uh, show you that shows Biden in the White House, and there's things that are not right. Curtains wrinkled, cars in the background, in the windows. It's a lawn, and there's normally trees. The desk is darker. There's things missing. It is not. I'm telling you, it is not the White House. It did, I mean, there's a lady who is very connected to someone, Michelle Moore Winder or something like that. She's got a lot of inside information. She is saying Biden is not in the White House. It's a stage. Believe that if you want. I don't care. Um, uh, here's what's interesting, too. When Trump signed an executive order, there was always a big deal. There was always people around they could watch. Notice Biden's executive orders... No one's around. Matter of fact, there's been pictures and I haven't seen him. Someone said that when he's signing them, there's, you can see that there's nothing on them. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't really care because it falls back to the Constitution. There was a video of him signing it when someone put it in front of him. They said, what's this about? Like he says it, which is interesting. Um, so the idea, guys, is we need people, as many people to know this as possible. Then... It doesn't look bad when either the military takes back over or Trump takes back over or whatever. He, Biden, is illegal. So is the entire United States administration, for that matter, because of what they did. And if you're just tuning in now, go back to the beginning and listen to why I said that. So, with all that said, um, I'm going to field some questions. And guys, I'm looking through... Um, all your po your comments and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just going to say thanks to a lot of people. I'm just going to throw out some names here. Um, Chris, thanks for joining. Chris Seaton, Kenny Elpers, Darren Tingley, Kathy Lindstrom, 
Reba, if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry, I'm just running through. Uh, Glenda, Karen, Sarah, Sue, uh, Reba, um, Linda Albin, Lisa, um, uh, Walter. Yeah, I think Chris were saying it was a dirty bomb, some kind of small suitcase. Susan, Tom, Tom and Clark, two Toms back to back, Robin, Kimberly, Heather, Mark Vest, Kendrell, um, Kelly Helpers. Okay. I could go through all these people. Guys, this is awesome. Thanks for thanks for joining in. Um, well, I, I love to answer questions. Uh, thanks for all the amens, by the way. Yeah, Harris was sworn in 1141 and Biden was sworn in 1148. Against the law. It's against the law, guys. Can't happen. But another violation of the Constitution. Um no, we're not going to have to vote again. What's going to happen is there's going to be a house. Here's what's interesting, guys. Um, there are now reports of 200. And, I'm looking at my phone and talking to you guys because I'm seeing me and then seeing you. This is kind of weird. Um, there are now 250,000 um, uh, what are they called? Someone help me. 250,000 um, um People guilty was help me. I'm sorry. I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, indictments. Thank you. Um, there are 250,000 indictments. So there's 250,000 people, guys, that are supposed to be arrested for all of this activity. So we're going to experience a two or three months if military does what they're supposed to do. Two or three months worth of uh, arrest um, and. I don't know at that point if Trump will do another election or he'll just pick people. Um, don't know. Um, all right. Anybody else have any questions, comments? And, I, and um, there's probably there's a little bit more I want to share with you. But um, first of all, anybody else? Questions? I'm, I'm just... Um, if we do become the communist states of America, can I be your bunk mate? And move? <laughs> Jimmy James. Um, here's the deal, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to just share this. Um, we have, my family got passports probably a year, well, six months ago or more. And our plan was if Biden got elected to get out of the country. Um, because it will get very, 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 very bad um, if if the military doesn't step in and do something. At this point, we do not have confirmation from the Lord to leave. Now, the problem is, the question is, where are you going to go? You know, that's a big question. Leaving the country, I mean, it's all corrupt anymore. It's just crazy. Military's all, I mean, government's all over, collapsing. Um, where do you go? What do you do? And that's a tough, tough question. Um can Biden remove the wall? Wow, that's a loaded question. If he believes he has that authority and can convince whoever to remove the wall, then he can. Not because he's given that authority, but if he does it, it's illegal. So it's not, he does not have the authority to remove the wall under any circumstance whatsoever. He can remove the wall because he can, he can convince people that he has authority and and he can hire construction crews to come in and do it. Now, it's illegal, but he can do it. Um, when is the Dur Durham report coming out? I don't know. Um, good question. I'll look into that. It doesn't matter. You know, DNI Ratcliffe already has his report. Um, <laughs> um, uh, that, that showed foreign interference in elections. Uh, if America falls, the world falls. There will be nothing to escape. We have to fight. Yes. But guys, right now we're in information warfare. Right now we have to fight with information. We've got to get this information to the military. I, the reserves, the Army, Navy, Air Force, everyone that's involved in the military needs to understand that they are in authority right now and that they do not take commands from Joe Biden. They have to know that, okay? They have to know that. And I, I heard military did have control over the wall too, but um, right now we have to get this information in the hands of the military. Share this video a million places, guys. 
because it's the Constitution. It's not, don't have to believe me. Believe the Constitution. It's very clear. You know, I don't care if people believe me. I really don't. You know, people, have, I can't tell you how many people are like, Michael, you just need to shut up and give up and blah, blah, blah. And, and I, guys, I'm not. I'm not going to shut up. I am not. There's, there's a few things I'll die for. One of them is Jesus Christ. Number two is my family. And number three is the United States of America. And I'll go down fighting. And I don't have a problem with it. And, and we better buckle up. You know, the military needs to know. The police need to know. Everybody needs to know this was a fraudulent election. Everyone. This is, this is, not, this is not Michael Knapp mad because oh, my political candidate didn't win. No. This is the Constitution that got violated. The Constitution got raped, guys. This is a big deal. This is it. This is the last of America if we don't stand up. This is not, I'm afraid I'll lose my job if I tell people that. I'm afraid that, that my boss, well, guys, I, I'm going to tell you something. When this all started going down, when COVID started happening and the Lord told me that it was a terrorist attack and I started making it public in March, I was pastor in a church then and people thought I was crazy. Like, Michael, shame on you. And then, then, and then in the same time, around the same time when Black Lives Matter came out and all these Andy Stanley churches, and I'm not dogging them, I'm just saying a lot of these kind of churches were like, oh, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, we need to cheer them on. Guys, and I'm not a racist. But I knew God spoke to me that Black Lives Matter was a darker front and I started making it public. I said, people, and this was the Lord told me this. This wasn't man. Nobody told me this. The Lord told me, Michael, it's in front. Don't let people get involved. And I started doing this and, and people from the church were calling me. I had one lady tear into me like, I can't believe you would say that. I can't believe that you would speak out against COVID. <laughs> I had to, guys. And right now I don't have really, there's no church anymore, but I didn't care because guys, the church is not my provider. A bunch of these people that gave the church are not my provider. Jesus Christ is my provider. And that's one of the things, guys, when, when, the, when the Israelites went in the wilderness for 40 years, they, they, they weren't going, well, my boss, I can't say that. My, their boss was Jesus Christ, was the God of the universe, guys. I know Jesus wasn't them, but Jesus has been there from the beginning. Bible says, bara sheep, bara Elohim. The word Elohim is plural. It's there's the Trinity was there at the beginning. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and, and the end. But the idea, guys, is is that these folks didn't rely on their jobs. They didn't rely on, on that next check. They relied on Jesus Christ. And man, I believe if you are not prepared for this right now, that's what's happening. That This is where we are right now. We have a illegitimate government. And we need to be praying. Guys, I'm telling you, Here's what's interesting, guys. The Bible talks about a lot of this stuff. And I've said this at the beginning, the Bible talked about, and everybody, you all heard about global warming, right? Global warming. It went from global warming, global warming, global warming to climate change. Well, what's weird? I used to not agree with global warming. And I used to not agree with climate change. But if you if you look, there has been, since 1970, there's been a 300% increase in natural disasters, famines, earthquakes, pestilence, all that kind of stuff. And people are like, what the heck's going on? And it's interesting the, the quicker it comes, the more intense it becomes. And what's interesting, the Bible says that. In Matthew 24, 25, it says, they're the beginnings of birth pains. What's unique about birth pains? The more frequent they get, the more intense they get. Guys, you can call it global warming, you can call it climate change. I'm saying God's waking us up. Then he says in the same area, he said, we're being, there's at the same time, we're going to be deceived. Boom, we're being deceived like crazy right now, guys. Crazy what's happening. The, the media is behind this guy. Here's what's crazy. Other countries know that you, there was foreign interference in election. Other countries know foreign that, that election laws were violated. Us Americans were like, ooh, why? Because the media is behind it. It's crazy. All right, any other questions? Anybody else have any questions? How soon before they drop the evidence? Um, Walter asked me how soon before they drop the evidence. I, I don't know what evidence you're talking about. Um, the D class has already happened. Um, I watched a video for a while and it was excruciatingly boring of the D class. What happened, it was just report after report. It was just numbers and numbers and numbers and you had to go look the numbers up. But the information's out there, but what's happening is 
Google and all these other platforms are blocking people from getting that information. So it's really hard. So it's coming uh, and it's, uh, it's out there. Uh, okay. Anybody else have anything? Sorry, the phone's right, right in front of me here. Any questions? Anybody? Anyone? Bueller? Please, please share this video, guys. Please. I gave you plenty of documentation. And it's hard to believe that we are there, but we're there. Let me say this clearly again. Six states violated federal election laws. Let me read that again. I'm just going to read it to you because I want people to get this in their head. What the Constitution says. Um, the Constitution simply says the time and manners of holding elections for senators and representatives, along with the president, shall be prescribed in each state by the legislative there, thereof, but the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations. That didn't happen. The states with the governors and elect, uh, election officials pass laws, violation. Immediately, that violates the United States Constitution and the rest of its history. And go back and listen to everything I've said from the beginning. What about Q? Good question. Q is, where that comes from is a quantum, Q is for quantum, quantum computer. A quantum computer, the best I can describe it, I'm really bad at describing this because I'm not a techie. A quantum computer is able to predict the future based on information that you put into it. It's like, it's a bad example, and, 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 and someone that understands Q would probably beat me for saying this, but it's the only way I can describe it because it's the only way I know how. If you have, let's say you're a gambler in a horse track, what you, you, if you had this really intricate computer where you could put in all the information about all the horses, their exercise patterns, their strengths, their diets, their everything about them, the jockeys, the... Uh, how they're feeling that day, everything, you could predict an outcome of something like that, like a, of a race, ideally. Now, that's a bad example, but the idea is a quantum computer has the ability, and I it, Google it, and I'm going to say it wrong, the ability to predict the future. Well, um, what it does is it lays out a series of things that, that, that um, people are supposed to do to make this action take place. Well, you got it. There's only six of these quantum computers in the world and there's supposedly the Q movement. There's supposedly only 10 people involved in the actual Q movement and the Q uh, non, the Onan part of it is anonymous. So these are people that are involved in it just by following the movement. Well, the idea is the enemy also has some supercomputers that are capable of calculating and do all, all kinds of stuff too. So Q has predicted all of this. Now, obviously, a lot of the stuff has been interrupted. It's, it's part of cyber warfare, okay? Um, so uh, Q has been pretty, you know, it's interesting. I didn't start studying Q to about a month ago, and man, they, they've been dead on. Uh, but at the same time, it, it, it's cyber warfare. So what happens is, guys, we're back and forth with where Trump, it, it's like playing a game of chess. Um, you can predict, you can lay out, um, Okay, that's another way of describing it. If, if you were a supercomputer, you could video someone uh, who plays chess and watch their mindset over and over and over and over and over again, and you can predict how they're going to play out in a game. Well, that's kind of how a supercomputer works, and it suppose, or this quantum computer, and it can predict six months to a year in advance. It's that accurate. Yeah, they yeah too. David Jones said they violated their own state laws, too. So Trump knows all this, but when will it come down? Here's here's the deal, guys. Right now, we're in, in a cyber technology leadership warfare. It's, it's a mess. And basically, what has to happen right now, what has to happen, the entire military needs to understand who they are and what their position is from the top general down. And the sad part is there's generals that are not on Trump's team. So you have to get everybody understanding the magnitude of how deep and dark the deep state is so that all this can be exposed. And when people get on board with the military, then you've got citizens on board with the military. You've got the military on board. You've got generals coming on board. The idea is that's what has to happen for, for, to, to, to win this. And so we don't know when this is going to come down. I've heard that March was the, the goal. Um, okay, who is responsible for Nashville? Let me explain what I've heard about Nashville. So Nashville, I heard two reports of Nashville. 
Now, we know that Dominion Systems machines were supposed to end up in Nashville somewhere, but what the other thing that we know is that was an AT&T center right there. Now, AT&T has been capturing um, our phone conversations, every conversation we make, whether it's on our cell phones, but even landlines, from since like the 70s or 80s or something like that, and they have all that data backed up at a data center, and I don't know if it was that data center in Nashville, and there was efforts to, to there was two different things I heard. One was there was they were trying to destroy that information because that's where a lot of, you can use that information for legal purposes to find out if people are guilty. You can go back and go to phone conversations. Um, there was also Dominion Systems where I heard multiple things, but what I've heard was there was a guy that was trying to bomb it and and we used the Space Force. That was not a, there was bombs there, but the Space Force cleared every, the white hats over and over again said, get out of the area, get out of the area, get out of the area. Get, it was a recorded message to get people out and Space Force actually sent a, I don't even know what you call it. It's a, um, it's not laser. I don't know what you call it, um, but to, to stop it and, and got everybody to the area, ex exploded the area and, um, and took care of that scenario. Anybody else? Questions? Yo, Jay, what's up, brother man? Nick, thanks for joining. Emily Ann, thank you. Q, Lisa. All right, John Verkamp, David Jones, David Jones. Not sure if it's the same David Jones I know. I need to look. Uh, if I click on it, I don't know if I can click on you or not. I know another David Jones. If it's not that one. Um, anybody else? Questions, thoughts, comments? Guys, I'm going to just be very, very bold with you right now. Right now, right now, we got to get on our knees and pray. It's, I mean, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you. Yes, 9-11 was an inside job, yes. Um, what happened in 9-11? Their 9-11, they had announced on like 9-10 or something like that, the official release of, of moving away from or in that time era moving away from our current financial system and um when that happened um it was an inside job to take down um, um the towers i already talked to my my thoughts on q i kind of already talked about that a little bit um q is a is supposedly 10 people some military people and trump is obviously part of q Nobody knows exactly who, Q is the quantum system, uh, uh, computer, which I explained, and Q is the 10 people involved in the movement, okay? Um, so JFK uh, Jr. is still alive. Here's the idea with that. Um, Trump and JFK Jr. were friends. They were very good friends, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all if um, he shows back up. Is it you, Uncle Bernie? <laughs> Love, God. Uh, uh, I, I I need to click you. I don't know if it'll take me out here. I can't. I can't click you to see if it's the day. Is this the Dave Jones from Evansville, the, the video guy, or is this another Dave Jones? I got two of them. <laughs> is it you, Uncle Bernie? Love. I love that. Thank you. Nothing like being called a hunk of burning love from uh, another man. <laughs> oh man, guys, I I have. I have enjoyed doing, I'm, you know, I grew up watching my dad politically, but this has been a lot of fun. He's not, my dad wasn't a politician. He just loved to argue politics and, and, um, but I'm passionate about this stuff. I try my best. I, I guys, I'm, I, um, you like the hair? Someone said they love my hair. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I decided, I, uh, um, David Jones from Evansville. Awesome. All right. So anybody else comments, thoughts? Anybody else? Anyone else? Any more questions? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, David Jones, yeah. Cool. Oh, that David Jones, yeah. All right, got it. Yeah, I have the old historic home downtown Evansville. Come down to the beach, guys. It's a great place. Santa Rosa Beach. 
uh, thank you, Julie or Jay, whoever's that. Uh, uh, all right. Did every president was elected find out these things about the deep state or just go along with it? And Trump was the first one to stand up and be brave enough to expose it. I, there's no question that once people that when you see the involvement with the Bushes and the Clintons and Obamas, it is weird that they all became such good friends. When you see all the connections, Bushes and their oil ties, um, Clinton's obviously an Obama. I mean, Obama, nobody even knew the guy, and all of a sudden, boom, he's on the scene. It's all deep state money. Guys, it's a combination between deep state money and deep state threats. And and think about that. Think about this. <clears throat> let me let me just pull, do it this. Do it this way. I come to you and I say, okay, I'm going to give you a billion dollars or I'm going to kill you. It, it, you have two choices. You do what they tell you to do. You're going to you either accept the money or you, you're you're dead and most people are going to accept it. Um, so, all right. So, President Trump and and Vice General Flynn. I I I. It's going to either be Flynn or Pompeo as Vice President. Some people think Flynn is actually going to be the one going around the country working on establishing, building new relationships with people and all that kind of stuff. Um, so. I, Right now, it actually makes more, both of them make sense as a vice president, but because of all the military action, I think Pompeo needs to be, I don't know, they're both so good. I, I don't know which one probably makes the most sense. Anybody else have anything? I asked that question and I don't hear for about 30 seconds, so I'm going to wait for one more 30 second deal just to see if anybody's got any questions. Please, guys, share this. I mean... If I'm wrong, okay, um, it is what it is, but I'm not because the Constitution is what the Constitution says. It's hard to argue that. It's believed that JFK and Reagan both attempted to move us away from, yes, yes, um, yes, that's true. JFK was the first. That's why JFK was murdered. JFK was murdered to move us away from the central banking systems owned by the Rothschilds and move us over to another uh, a system. Basically, guys, our money is worth nothing. It, it's not backed by anything right now, for the most part, it's just paper. But we gotta move back to a more se secure system, and that's the Nasara and Jasara. And if I'm correct, is Nasara is national and Jasara is global. I may, correct me if I'm wrong there. By the way, there's like 200 other countries that are, that are per gonna participate in this, or something, like some crazy number of countries. All right. Guys, please join me in prayer right now. Davy Jones, man, I remember Davy Jones. That's so cool. I hadn't seen you or talked to you for a while. Davy Jones. I love Davy Jones. All right, let's pray. So, Jesus, we want to come. You know, I'm going to say this, guys. The Bible is very clear. It says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my holy face and turn from their wicked ways, then I would forgive them of their sin and heal their land. Then... And then and only then I would forgive them of their sin and heal their land. Guys, we, we are living in a crossroads of righteousness or unrighteousness. And, and if, we, if we surrender to the will of the Father, we can keep running through the Red Sea and know that the enemy is going to drown. And, and guys, that's my prayer for us, that we would surrender to the will of God. Guys, what it, what it, here's the first question is, what is the will of God? The first will of God is for us to receive Christ. I mean, ultimately, we're sinners. I'm gonna, I always share this. We are sinners, fallen short of God's glory. The Bible says not one person, no one is righteous, not even one. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But guys, Jesus died on the cross so that we could be made righteous, so that our sins would get put on the cross and that we could have everlasting life. That's the first thing that we need to do is get our hearts right with Jesus. This is crazy, guys. Here's one of the things that's crazy. There's a revival breaking out right now across the country because of this. This is this is a God movement, and it's hard. It's hard. But, guys, nothing ever great happened without getting on our knees. So I just pray, God, that you would move and you would do a great thing and that we would surrender our hearts. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe God raised from the dead, you will be saved. But you also have to repent and turn from that sin. So Jesus, I pray that if anyone is watching right now that is nervous or scared or anxious, that they would put their full and 100% trust in Jesus Christ. 
hundred percent. They would pray that prayer right now and just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner falling short of your glory, and I, I'm, and, and I need you right now. I just pray that, God, because that is the peace that transcends all understanding, and that will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. So I just pray for that right now, that people would receive. Lord, we love you, we're relying on you, and we look forward to what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. This was an hour and 40 this is the longest I've actually talked. I'm out. Thanks for watching, guys. All right. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And um, feel free to make comments, suggestions, whatever. God bless.